Today we're going to learn Eruvin Dachet. Today's daf is dedicated by Becky Fryant in memory of her mother, Fayini Fryant, Zechon Alavracha, on her Yurit site. She was a great teacher and supporter of women's learning. May her memory be for a blessing. We are going to start now at the very top of Chet, but before we start, I'm just going to review a little bit of what we talked about yesterday and correct something that I suggested and I wasn't sure about and I realized right after I said it was probably a mistake and it was a mistake, so I want to correct myself. When we talked about this Mavoy that opens up into a Chatzer, so we have an alleyway, it opens up into a courtyard. Let's say there's two other courtyards that open up into the Mavoy and they're together with an Eruv Chatzerot and the back courtyard is not part of it. So in that case, you cannot carry in the Mavoy at all, because that's the whole idea here of Eruv, that if one person doesn't join the Eruv, then you don't have an Eruv, basically. Those people in the Chatzer, in the back Chatzer, make it problematic, and you cannot carry in that Eruv. Okay, so that's something just I wanted to clarify, because I wasn't so clear about it yesterday. Okay, so we had two cases yesterday. If you remember, we started with Rav Yehuda, who said or actually Rav Yosef said in the name of Rav Yehuda about an alleyway that leads into a backyard area. So we said because the backyard area isn't really used very much, so therefore, even if the backyard area is open, Rav Yehuda said it's not a problem. We, have, right, we don't have an issue here. You're allowed to carry in this mavo. You can basically put a lefi or Korah in the front and allow carrying within this mavo. Then we said that that must not be according to Rav. Why? Because Rav says the same kind of case, even though it's not really, where if the alleyway opened up into a courtyard and the courtyard opened up to the public domain, then we view that, according to Rav, that only the people in the courtyard can carry within the courtyard. Let me also clarify what this means. It means, first of all, you don't need anything to carry in your own courtyard. You can carry in your own courtyard without anything, as long as there's walls in your courtyard. Here we have walls with openings, but they're openings. They're not breaches in the wall, so it's fine. But you can't carry from your houses into the courtyard. You can only carry items that were already in the courtyard from before Shabbat. That's allowed. If you want to carry within that courtyard from the houses, then they would have to do what we call an Eruv Chatzerot. They would have to be together, put some food together, and then everyone from their houses would be able to take things out. Let's say they want to do a picnic, all the people in the courtyard, they want to bring all their food. They'd have to, before Shabbat, say that we're together, put some food together. But they can carry only within that Chatzer because they have the walls and they can see, but they can't carry into the Mavoy. And the mavoy can't be fixed because, right, the assumption is the people in the chatzir mess up, mess it up for the people in the, in the mavoy. So we thought that that contradicted this case with the rechava, because we assume that the front yard, back yard, it's all kind of the same. However, there's a big difference because remember, when it's the backyard, the people in the backyard, they don't leave through the mavoy and they don't leave through the Rashid Rabin generally, the, they leave through the front of their houses. So because their exit to their houses, and you can see this from the pictures, the exit from their houses is to a different, they go out to Rashid Arabim in a different way. And that's why that case is considered that they're not even part of this Mavoy at all. And therefore, in the end, they say that Rav himself distinguishes in the Chatzir case between whether they did an Eruv or they didn't do an Eruv. And if the Chatzir people, the courtyard people, made an Eruv with the alleyway, with all the people in the alley, with the rest of the people, then you could actually carry. And that is then similar to the case of the Rechava because it's as if they did an Eruv. They don't really do an Eruv because they don't need to do an Eruv. The point is they don't even need an Eruv and therefore even Rav would agree in the backyard case that it's fine because those people don't mess up anything for the Mavoy people. And therefore, number one, you don't even need an Eruv. You can carry. And the fact that it's open on the other side doesn't really interest us because nobody really uses that backyard space. It's like dead space. Okay, so we do this if it's not. In the end, we say there's no machlok at Rav and Shmuel on this issue. However, the Gemara now wants to go back and say, what were you thinking originally? And if you remember, we said there were Tarte. There's actually two machlok, and we're going to understand something new that we didn't understand yesterday about Rav's opinion. Ulamai de salakadate mi what you thought originally, I'm now starting from the top of Dabche, bein she'irvu, bein she'lo'irvu pligi, that the machloket had nothing to do with whether there was an Eruv, there wasn't an Eruv, meaning basically they're going to have a machloket both in the case where there was an Eruv and they're going to disagree both in the case where there wasn't an Eruv. Who's disagreeing? It's really Rav Yehuda, 
and right, who this statement was made in his name in the, from Rav Yosef, who said about the Mavoy opening into the backyard, which opened up into Rashid Rabin, you don't need anything. It's not a Mavoy Mikulash, and you don't need anything at all, or meaning you need a regular A roof, but the people in the Rechava are irrelevant, versus Rav, who was talking about the Chatzer, that if you have a mavoy that opens into a chatzir, which opens into the public, you cannot carry from one to the other, but you can carry within the chatzir. And this is viewed as a mavoy mefulash that's opened on two sides. So now we're going to assume that they argued really in two scenarios. They argued whether there was an roof, and they argued even if there, if there wasn't an roof. They're going to argue in both cases. The case we described really when we thought they were arguing was a case where there was no roof. And then the Chatzar people can't go into the Mavoy, and that's why the Mavoy is that the Mavoy people are forbidden because there was no Eruv. But now we're going to see that they really argue even if there was an Eruv. So now we're going to explain. The Machlok, and now we're going to learn something else about Rav. Rav said, Rav's case specifically was, again, I'm just going to keep repeating, but I'm going to focus on a different detail. The Mavoy is open to the Chatzer, and the Chatzer is open to the public domain. So they're going to assume right now that Rav is only saying it's a problem if it's open to the public domain. But if it were closed, Rav would actually think that it's okay. Now, why is it okay? So let's read. If there's no Eruv, their Machloket is near Emi Bachutz Veshavemi Bifnim. There's actually a wall between the Mavoy and the Chatzir in this case. Remember, we talked about that when you're in the Chatzir, you see the wall. When you're in the Mavoy, you don't see the wall. And until now, we've been saying that's the whole reason why in the Chatzir they can carry. That's why Rav said, in the Chatzir it's allowed, in the Mavoy it's not allowed. But now, why does he think in the Mavoy it's not allowed? Because there's an opening on the far side of the courtyard which opens to the public domain. But if it were to be closed over there, then the assumption is that this is what they thought, that Rav would hold that once it's closed, then we can view the Chatzar and the Mavoy as two separate domains. We have a Chatzar that's its own Chatzar that has walls and you can see them from the inside. And the Mavoy is separated from the Chatzar by walls also. And the wall of the Chatzar can function like a Lechi. It's just a different type of Lechi. It's called Alechi hanir'e mibachutz. Okay, let's look at a picture of that, okay? The picture of that, um, I forget now if they have, I think they don't have a picture here about it. I think it's not in the Ma'ora Mivu'al, okay? Normally, when you have a, a lechi, right, we generally imagine the lechi is on the inner wall of the, of the wall of the mavi. Okay, if you look at the, it's hard to see from here, but if you have a Schattenstein, okay, so the, the Schattenstein edition, the art scroll. Here, there's the black. You see the black where my finger is? So that's the end of the wall. And instead of going inside toward the other wall, it's facing outside. So when you're sitting in the mavoy, you can't see that lechi at all. But you can see it from the outside. So the machloket is, and here Rav is actually going to be more lenient. Rav is going to say, if you can see it from the outside and not from the inside, that actually works. And where do they get this from? Because Rav said the problem is if it's open on the other side to the public domain. But if it's closed, then the Chatzir is one reshut and the Mavu is another reshut. And basically, the wall of the Chatzir that we don't see from inside the Mavoy when we're facing the, the courtyard, that wall is actually like a lechi that you can see from the outside. And that functions as a wall. And we then view the alley as one reshut and the Chatzir is a different reshut and they're separate. And we have no problem if the B'nai Chatzir don't join, doesn't bother us, okay? That, that's basically the, and this is all, why is this? This wouldn't work, by the way, for a Chatzir on the side. Normally, you have the alley goes narrow, right? The alley's narrow, and there's all these openings on the side to different Chatzir road. That won't help. It's only because it's totally open on that side. And then we say, oh, it's just like the other side, the entranceway, and there's, a wall, right? There's basically a lechi there. So that would work. Now, what about the irvu? So that's the machloka between them, okay? In the shalo irvu. The irvu, when it comes to, if they made an eruv, they would also disagree. What's the disagreement? Whether they agree with Rav Yosef. Now, obviously, Rav Yosef was quoting Rav Yehuda, so obviously Rav Yosef would agree with Rav Yosef, and Rav wouldn't. 
Okay, you can see in the chart, it's all charted out. Da'ama Rav Yosef, and today I added a bunch of explanations in the chart to make it easier if you want to review it. Da'ama Rav Yosef, lo shano ela shekala la'emtza rechava, aval kala letzidei rechava asur. So Rav Yosef said, this whole case, and this is how we described it yesterday, is when you go straight into the Mavoy. In fact, there's a mistake in the Koran, because the Koran put this picture in yesterday, and it's not accurate, the one we'll get to in a minute. Julie and I were discussing this after class. So if you are in the Mavoy, and it leads into your Rechava, your backyard, it's only if you're going straight in the Mavoy, and then it branches out in both directions. You're basically, when you enter the Rechava, you're entering in the center of the Rechava. According to Rav Yosef, that's the only case that this works. But if the wall of the Rechava on one side is flush with your Mavoy wall, with your alleyway wall, and basically it's like an L shape where your Mavoy leads into your, your alleyway and then it turns left, that's the picture they accidentally put in the Quran in yesterday's stuff. Actually appears in today and in yesterday. So if you have a note, if it starts going off to the side like that, then you have a problem. Why do you have a problem? Because there's no clear differentiation when you're walking from your Mavoy into your Rechava that you're entering into something different, right? And the pictures here in the Ma'or Mavoir, it's very clear because they show, right, the Rechava is brown, right? And the, and the Mavoy has, you know, the Rechava looks kind of like cork and the, and the Mavoy has a different floor, okay? But assume this doesn't have a different ground. This is just trying to show you in a three-dimensional way of the differences. But you're just walking straight through. Okay, so now we're in picture number... Where would it be? Picture number 43. Okay, in picture number 43, you're going straight in the Mavoy into the Rechava, and then, you know, the Rechava goes out to the other side. That's going to be a problem. Rav Yosef says that's a problem, but if it goes into the middle of the Rechava, it's okay. But Rav, okay, now we're going to say Rav disagreed, right? So this, it, this is what, again, now this is only what they thought. They thought that Rav disagreed with this, and Rav thinks no. Even if it goes to the middle of the Rechava, it's still a problem, just like the Chatzir, okay? So that's what they thought originally. So that explains what originally their thoughts were about this. Now we're going to go on a bit about this Emtza and Batzad. Rabbi Yosef just said that it has to go into the middle in order to allow it. So Amar Rabba, he limits this even more. He says, Ha de Amar la Emtza Rechava Mutal. By the way, we're going to limit this even more and now explain the case differently than we explained it yesterday. Yesterday we assumed you have entered to the Mavoy. You're going through your Mavoy. You enter your Rechava. The Rechava is much wider, right? Because you enter in the middle. And then where's the exit to the Rashid Rabim? Straight ahead of you. Okay? That's what we thought. But now he says, no, when we said La Emsa Rechava Mutal, you're going to be allowed to carry there. And we don't view this as a Mavoy Mefulash. La Maran Ela Zeshalo Keneged Zeh. It's only when the exit of the Mavoy, uh, I'm sorry, the exit from the backyard to the public is not opposite you. If the exit is opposite you, it's going to be a problem. It has to be that the exit is on the side so that when you're standing at your entrance way to the alleyway, you don't see on the other end the exit from the other side. Okay, and that you can see in picture number 44. In picture 43, they show it where it's straight ahead. In picture 44, they show that you have to turn to get out to the exit. And Kwam's Rabban, he says, even Rav Yosef Umatir, this who allowed this, so we now have two conditions. Number one, it has to be that it's not, the wall is not flush against the, the wall of the backyard, and the exit to Rashid Rabim has to be off to the side. Okay, next issue. Amar Rav Masharshia. Hada Amar, now he's going to limit the other. Zesh aloke neged zem mutal, lo amaran ela rechava de rabi. We have another limitation. We just said, number one, it has to open to the middle. Number two, it has to, the entrance has to be off to the side, right? The exit, sorry, from the backyard to the public. But now we're going to say, when we say you have to enter in the middle, that's only going to work if it's a rechava that belongs to a number of people. But rechava de yachid is going to be a problem. If that backyard belongs to one person only, what's our concern? We're worried that what might happen, that person might decide, and this is really, I think, the picture that we just saw, which one? No, not yet. Uh, they don't actually show it. Okay, fine. They don't show it here, but let's say the owner of that backyard decides he wants to build a house there. 
and he wants to fill in his backyard or extend his house out. And he might extend it out to the line of the alleyway. Then we're going to be in trouble. So therefore, if it's, now this is, again, it goes back to psychology or, or um, human behavior. Individual versus many. If you want to think about it, nowadays, if you want to build and extend your house out, you have to get permission from all your neighbors, right? Now let's assume maybe that's not so complicated, but if they want to do something on the street, let's say, and they need the permission of everybody to do it, that's never going to happen. But at least here you get your neighbors to sign if, you know, they're usually nice and they sign because otherwise you'll do the same to them. But I remember when I tried to do it, my neighbor kind of threatened me and said, you know, well, we're going to sign for you, but you have to promise to sign for me when I do, she could see them on my house. So anyway, that usually is not so complicated. And especially in those days where I don't think they really needed permission to, to extend their houses. But if you want to build something on the street that below, or, or a place that's public that belongs to a number of people, it's much more difficult to get everybody to agree on about that. So therefore, if it's in, in a lot of people, we're not worried that anything's going to change. But if it's an individual, we're very worried the person might build. And if the person builds and ends up, it ends up flush with the alleyway, then it's going to be a problem, but they're going to be used to carrying in there and they won't realize and they'll end up carrying. So because of that concern, we actually don't allow it according to Rav Masharshia if the Rechava belonged to an individual. Now the Gemara wants to know, right? And then, right, Vanele Batim, they're going to build Batim and Havele Kimavoy Shakalalit Sidei Rechava. So it's going to be just like that Mavoy that has the wall flush with the, with the backyard. Where do we know that there's such a distinction? Whoever said there's such a distinction like this? Well, we're going to see in a different case. I'll just stop for a minute and I'll have you look at the pictures. Okay, so we have a Mavoy that on one side, it's picture number 45. One side of the Mavoy, okay, again, it's a little hard to see with my camera, but here's the Mavoy over here. One side goes out, right? Here's the public. That's the exit on the Mavoy. One side, there's no walls, notice, on this Mavoy. Normally, we have walls. One side, there's water, and we'll read them inside in a minute. On the other side, there's uh, garbage dump. Okay, so why is this significant? We'll see in a minute. So, Tzido Chad Kalel Yam, Tzido Chad Kalel Ashpa. Now, what's the issue? An Ashpa, a garbage dump, is generally more than 10 fucking tall. So, that becomes a wall, because a wall needs to be 10 handbreadths tall. The sea itself also is a wall. Why is that? Because the ground of the sea, even, even if the water comes right up to the level of the Mavoy, we view it based on the ground, and we're going to assume that the water is at least 10 tfachim deep. So therefore, you have a wall on one side of depth of 10 tfachim, and you have a wall on the other side of height of 10 tfachim. So those basically have, are walls. Well, there was a Maaseh that happened, Uba Maaseh Lefnei Rebi, so the, they asked Rebbe, can we use, can we assume that this Maboy has walls? Below Amarba, lo heter, below Isur. He didn't want to allow it and he didn't want to forbid it, right? Kind of left them hanging. Isur lo Amarba, dahakaime mechitzot. He said, look, there really are walls. You're right. But heter lo Amarba, chashinan shemachinat tel ashpa, via ale hayam sirton. There's a concern that maybe someone will empty out the garbage dump and then it will be lower than 10 tfachim. And he's worried that maybe the sand and rocks will wash up on the water and it won't be 10 tfachim deep anymore. And you'll end up with like a sandbar. So because of that, there are walls right now, but they might not be walls tomorrow. So now they ask, again, we want to see a distinction between Rabim and Yachit. So we're going to talk about, obviously, the water is happening by the hands of God, not man. But the dump is going to be dumped by people, not by, you know, not on its own. So now the Gemara says, Are we really concerned that someone might empty a garbage dump? Doesn't it say in the Mishnah, the Hatnan, okay, this is further on in the, in the Mesechet, If you're in your private house and right next to you is a garbage dump, it's in the public space, but it's 10 Tfachim tall. So that garbage dump is considered a Rashid Yachid. So you can pass from your Rashid Yachid to that Rashid Yachid. So the Mishnah tells us, if your window leads right out to the garbage dump, which may be convenient because you can dump your garbage out your window, it might not be so convenient because it's going to be pretty stinky. But anyway, you can throw your garbage out your window into there because even though it's in the public space, it's its own Rishud in the public domain. So that's okay. So what do you see here? Now, 
There, we're not concerned that maybe if we allow you to do that, someone might empty the garbage dump and you'll end up with, uh, with less than 10 tefachim. So what do they answer? The one out your window must be your own private garbage dump. And the one by the Mavoy is a public garbage dump. And the public garbage dump, we're worried someone might um, unload it. But here, uh, oh no, wait, maybe it's the opposite. Sorry, my mistake. Ashpadi Rabim, sorry, the one next to your house is an Ashpadi Rabim, and we're not worried that anyone's going to remove it. But Ashpadi Yachid, your own garbage dump, you might end up moving, and that must be the case of the Mavu. So Hachanami, like what's here, Shane Beim Rechavadi Rabim, Le Rechavadi Yachid. Okay, here also we're going to distinguish between public and private. Okay, I just want to check that I have that right. Um, um, Yeah, they're not worried about the public one that anyone's going to remove the garbage. We're worried about your own private, okay? So the one out your window is not your own, and therefore we're not worried about it. And apparently the Mavoy was their own. Because that's the only way they could come up with a distinction between the two cases. So that was Rebbe. Rebbe didn't want to say it's okay. Rebbe didn't want to say it's Asur. So now they say, Rabban Ammai, what about the rabbis? Do they have an opinion? So we're going to have two different versions of what the rabbis said. Am Rav Yosef Rav Dimi, Tana Vechachami Muslim. The writer says that the rabbis forbade. I'm Rav Nachman, and the Rav Nachman came and said, and we pass them like Chachamim, that you can't carry in this Mavoy because we're worried the water might wash up sand and it won't be Tent Fachim anymore. Right? These are basically walls that are not necessarily going to last as walls. The garbage dump might be dumped, and therefore it's a problem. Um, but there's a second version. According to a second version, the rabbis actually permitted this. But then, no matter what, the conclusion is still the same because Amar Rav Nachman ain't a lachak edivrei chachamim. He says there, in this version, we don't paskin like the chachamim, meaning we don't allow this. So either which way Rav Nachman doesn't allow it, it's just a matter, did the rabbis allow it or not? Now we're going to see some other situations. Mareim are pasak la l'sura b'ozle. In sura, sura was on the water, and there was a mavoi that was on the water. And he said, Amar chayshinan shema ya'aleha yam sirton. He was worried that since the Mavoy went out to the water, we have to worry about the sand washing up. And therefore, what did he do? According to some interpretations, Ozle is netting. He put up netting. Okay, you can see this in picture number, um, let's move on, picture number 47. Okay, we have basically these netting, like he made a wall in the breaches of the Mavoy. These yellow things are crisscross netting in order to create a wall basically there, a machitza. Okay, it wasn't enough to have the, the, uh, the water there. Next case, now we're going, okay, that was all an extension of what we were talking about. Now we're back to our mavoy akum. If you remember, we had a mavoy that is shaped like an L, where one side, right, it goes out. It's, a, it's not exactly mefulash, because mefulash is generally, it's open on, when you're facing the entrance of the mavoy, there's an en opening on the other end. Now we're talking about that you'd have to turn within the mavoy to, in order to go out the other side. So there was a Mavoi Akum da Hava Basura. If you remember, we have one in Pupadita. Now there was, uh, I think it was Naharda, sorry, in Naharda. Now we have one in Sura. Karich Budya, Otibe Bebe Itwumite. They took a Machzelet, a mat, and they stood it up in the corner of the L. Amar of Chista, Halo Kerav, Halo Keshmuel. This doesn't fit with Rav and it doesn't fit with Shmuel. This is the review. Remember what Rav and Shmuel said? Rav said, this is a Mavoi Mufulash. And you need, right, you need a lech your Korah on one side and a tzura petach on the other. Shmuel said, this is a mavoy satum, in which case all you need is a lech your Korah. So this doesn't match either one. The rav da amar Torah toke mefula tzurat petach by. You need a tzurat petach, a beam, a cross beam, and two posts. This is not tzurat petach, this is a mat. And the Shmuel da amar Torah toke satum, what do you need? Well, hanimile, lechi ma'alya, you need a good lechi. The wind is going to blow this. It's going to blow it away. This isn't even a lechi. A lechi has to be something that can stand. This is a mat. The mat's going to blow in the wind and be done with it. The only thing you could do is take this mat, hammer it into something, and then it'll stay and then it'll work. 
Gufa. Okay, now we're going back to our Chatzir Parutz Lemavoike, or Mavoi Parutz Lechatzir, okay, that we've been discussing. Gufa always means we're going to go in depth into something. We saw this just yesterday. I think it was yesterday or a few days ago, but the term Gufa means we're going to go in depth into something we said before. Amrav Yirmiya Bar Abba Amarav. Mavoi shenifratz b'mlo le chatzir v'nifratza chatzir k'negdo chatzir muteret mavoi asor. Again, your alleyway opens up into your courtyard, and your courtyard opens up into the public. We're going to basically say, in the courtyard you can carry, in the mavoi it's forbidden because, again, assuming there's no eruv we already explained, then the people in the chatzir are forbidding anyone in the mavoi to carry in the mavoi because it's not a common space. But, but the main important part here is that in the chatzir you can carry, here we're going to get really in depth into the gipufin, okay, these parts that you see the walls and the barriers between this and the other space and the openings Right, the mavoi was nifratz bimlo'o, kind of broken through, but from the chatzir into the mavoi, it basically just looks like an entrance into the mavoi. So now they're going to question, not the halacha, but why did Rav need to say this? We can learn this from an explicit mishnah. Isn't this a mishnah? Chatzir k'tana shenifratza l'gdola, gdola muteret, uktana asura. Okay, there's no picture here, but if you look in the Mishnah there, okay, and uh, it comes up on Daf Tzadidet. So if you flip to page, to the pages in the sheet, if you have your, your uh, pictures, it's number 320, 327. No, three, 325. Okay, you can see how many pictures are on this Masechet. Okay, so if you have a Chatzir Ketana that opens up into a Chatzir Gdola, so you have a narrower courtyard, and it opens up into a wider one. Now, if you're standing in the Chatzir Tana, it's just like the Mavoi. When you look into the Chatzir Gdola, the Chatzir Gdola is wider. You don't see any walls whatsoever. When you're in the Chatzir Gdola, since it's wider, the walls are further out, you see walls there. Okay, so what do they say in the Mishnah? If there's a Chatzir Tana, Shenifritza Ligdola, Dola Muteret Uktana Asura. The, the larger one is permitted because of these walls that you see on the sides. Because it, it's flush with the entrance and you don't see any walls. So therefore, this sounds like exactly the same thing. So why would you make a distinction? So now there's a big difference. What's the big difference? Well, in the case of the Mishnah, there's a small courtyard leading into a bigger one. Well, the big one, we could say you can carry in. Why? Because there's not so many people coming into the big courtyard, the big courtyard, because there's only a small courtyard of people that could go into it. So it's not a very common space. So you could say, like the whole question is why would Rav say something that can be found in a Mishnah? The same, but you can derive it very easily from the Mishnah. So they're going to say it's different. Because That's only when there's not a lot of people going through the Chatzir will allow the Chatzir to be carried in. But in our case, we have two things. We have number one, the mavoi, the alleyway leads to the chatzir. And number two, it's got an opening to the public domain. So it's a much more populated chatzir. Maybe you can't carry in it. Therefore, nami. he wanted to tell us even in the chatzir, you can still carry, even though a lot of people go through it. That's his chiddush. So now they say, wait a minute. If the whole thing is to say that even in the chatzir you can, in our case, the Hanami Tanina, that's also found in a Tosefta. Okay, and then again, you don't need it. Chatzir Shaharabim Nechnesim La Bezo, the Yotzim La Bezo. If you have a Chatzir that's open on two sides and people walk through, they use it as a, you know, as a cut through. Rishut Harabim Lituma, it's considered public space when it comes to any case of Safek Tuma. I'm not going to get into this now, but Safek Tuma, if it's in a private space, we're going to say it's Tame. If it's in a public space, we're gonna, and we're not sure if there's tumor or not, we're going to say it's not tame. This is all learned out from Soto. We'll see this a number of times in Shas. We'll discuss it more then, because this is really not our, our, our main topic. So for tumor purposes, we're going to view it as Rashid Arabim, because a lot of people go through. However, Le'inyan Shabbat, Rashid HaYachid Shabbat. We're going to call this Rashid HaYachid when it comes to Shabbat. So this is a Rashid HaYachid, even though lots of people walk through. So what do you see? If the whole difference between Rav and the Mishnah was, since there's a lot of people walking through, we wanted you to know it still can be called private, and just for the people in the Chatzir can carry, but you can learn that from this Tosefta. So they say no. Maybe that would only be 
if Rabim, you know, go through, but the entrance of one is not opposite the entrance of the other, maybe then. But in our case, if the entrance is opposite, maybe right, it would be a problem. Okay, so that's so that's the first suggestion. Maybe they want to teach you. No, our case is even if one entrance is opposite the uh, the exit, and therefore it's more likely people are going to walk through. Even then, it's going to be allowed. Okay, and that's the chiddush of Rav. But that obviously only works if you think, like we did yesterday, that this case works. You could carry in the chazir even if the entrance is opposite the exit. But Lerabah, who we saw today, Da'amal, Zekenegadze Asul, that's also forbidden, then we're back to square one. Well, then what's the chidush of Rav over the Tosefta? So Haderav, B'may Mokimla, B'zesha Lokenegadze, and then Tarte Lamali. Right, according to this, Rav is talking only when the entrances are not opposite each other, and then it would be the same as the Tosefta. You can't say, we don't know what the Tosefta is, but we, we wanted to make some distinction. That would be our distinction, but this won't help us because according to this, that's the only case this would be true also. So then what do we need them both for? So here comes their answer. There's two, there's two elements that are significant about calling this a Rishid Yachid. One is that if we call this Chatser a Rishid Yachid, a private domain, right? that's what the Tosefta said, it's a Rishid Yachid Yan Shabbat. Now that could mean two things. It could mean that I could carry here, which is what we thought it meant. But now they're going to say, no, maybe it only means that if I throw something from the public domain into here, it's a Rishul Yachid de Oraita, which means you're obligated. You're going to have to, you know, get skila if you did it on purpose, chatad if you did it accidentally. We, if we say this isn't a Rishul Yachid de Oraita, right, we don't, because people walk in and out, it's not so public, then actually it's going to become leniency. We're going to say, if you throw from the public domain into here, you'll be exempt. So maybe what he was trying to say is the stringency. He wanted to say in the Tosefta that if you throw into here, it's Rashid Yachid. But he wasn't saying the leniency that once we call this Rashid Yachid, you can carry within. And what Rav was coming to say is even Linyan Tiltul, you can carry. This is Rashid Yachid, private domain, 100%, for both throwing in from Rashid, from a public domain and for carrying within it. Okay? So that's what his Chiddush is. Okay. Now we're talking about a different case. Now we have a mavoy. The, the best way I thought about it was a die with six. Right? You have a die when you roll a six. So imagine you have these six spaces that are all mavoy akums, basically. You enter on the side of the die, and then imagine the die is rectangular. Uh, okay, not square, but the die is rectangular, like the shape of the six in a die. And each, right, you have little spaces there, little mavoys, and they all exit, right, the the space in between the dots on the die are all connected to each other. Okay, you can get from one to the other. Okay, for this we have pictures also. I'll obviously help you. Um, we're in picture number 49, okay? And then we're gonna see 49, 50, 51. Okay, there's a bunch of these. Okay, so, oh, by the way, I forgot to show you, picture 48 has a picture of the budya, the little machzelet that they put in. Okay, so now here's your, right? That's why it looks like a die, even the way they pictured it, it looks like it. That's why it made me think of it. Okay, so now, what do you do with a mavoi like this? So it's like a mavoi akum, you know, with a lot of mavoi akums together. Amar Abaye, there's a machloket. Itmar is usually an introduction to a machloket and mora'im. Amar Abaye, oset surat petach lagadol. Okay, if you enter on the side of the rectangle, okay, the narrow side, you put a surat petach there. V'hanach kulu mishchiru b'lechi v'kola. And the rest, you put a lechi and a kola in them. Okay, this is picture number... 49, where basically you have Tzurat petach on the side, and then by the exits of all the others, you have a Lechi or a Gohan. Now, the Gemara, but the opposite, we're going to have a different opinion now. Uh, first, Rava is going to complain about Abayah's opinion. Amale Rava, Kiman, who are you holding like? If you hold Kishmuel, then a Mavoy Akum is a Mavoy Satum, Lamale Tzurat petach. You don't even need a Tzurat petach if you think all Mavoy Akums are, are, um, are mavoy satum, then all you need is a lechi and a koha. Ve'od ha'hu mavoy akum da'hava bin hardea, and what happened to the mavoy akum in hardea? The chashule l'derav, right? And they were worried, and they said, no, that's not good enough. Ela amarava otzet surat ha'petach lekulu l'hai gisa, ve'idach gisa misharu b'lechi b'koha. You have to put a surat ha'petach, okay, now look at picture number 51. You have to put a surat ha'petach by all of them, 
okay, in the middle, right? That's exactly what we said about the Mavoya Kum in the end. You have to put the one in the hard yard. They put Surata Petach in between, right, in the point of the L. At all those crossroads, basically, you have to put. Then, on the other side, on the exit, on the other side to the Rashid Rabim, there you put a Lech Yurakoha. So basically, he disagrees with Abai and thinks that's what you have to do. Okay. Next case. And this is going to be kind of funny. There's a little comic relief here. Um, minor, but you'll see. Amar Rav Kahana Bar Tachlifa Mishmei De Rav Kahana Bar Minyume Mishmei De Rav Kahana Bar Malkio Mishmei De Rav Kahana Rabbe De Rav. Okay, we have a, a, a transmission of information from one Rav Kahana to another Rav Kahana to another Rav Kahana to another Rav Kahana. Okay, he's basically quoting the Rav Kahana before him, quoting the Rav Kahana before him, quoting the Rav Kahana before him. We'll get to the comic relief a little bit. The Amre, and some people say Amre La, it's one less than what we said. It's not actually four, but Rav Kahana Bar Malkio is Rav Kahana Rabbe de Rav. The last one was Rav Kahana, the Rav of Rav. Now we're going to say, oh, really, the third one in the list is actually, he is the Rav Kahana, the Rav of Rav. Okay, so whether it's passed down the name, three people or, or, two, or four people, either which way, here's what he says. Mavoy shetzido achad aroch, v'tzido achad katsal. What if your Mavoy wall, remember, the walls are coming from the side walls. Your entrance is made up of two side walls, right? Two walls on either side. What if one juts out of the Mavoy farther than the other? Where do you put your beam? Do you put your beam on an angle from the end of one wall to the end of the other? Or does it have to be flush against a space where there's a wall on both sides? Okay, generally we imagine the wall is straight, not angled. So here, if you look in picture number 52, you'll see the way they do it angled. Okay, where here is a wall, one juts out farther than the other. And basically you end up with this diagonal, or do you do it at the bait, right? Further into one of the walls, where as long as it's going to be flush on both sides. So that's the debate here that we're going to see. So Rav Kahana, you know, whichever Rav Kahana says the name of whichever Rav Kahana says, um, so Tzidel Chalaroch Tzidel Chal Katsar, Pachot Me Arba Amot Me Niachet Chorba Alachson. If it's less than four Amot, your beam basically has to cross a distance of less than four amot, and it, or I would say it like this. If it juts out less than four amot, the, the longer wall, then then you put it on a diagonal. Arba amot, if it's already more than four amot jutting out, then you put it on the short part of the, right, the shorter part of the wall, straight. Rava disagrees. Rava Amar, Okay, he says it has to be flush against both walls, straight, not angled. Now Rava continues and says, I'm going to give you the reason for both his opinion and my opinion. It has to be something noticeable. And once it's angled out, it's not going to be so noticeable. I guess when you're inside, you might not notice the other side. It's not going to be as noticeable. So basically, he says the reason I, right, I say it's because of Hekir and diagonal doesn't work. But he says, I told you this many times, that some of the machlokot and the mesechet are going to break down to a difference of approach. Is it because it's like an imaginary wall? He holds it's like an imaginary wall. If so, you can have a wall that's angled. So therefore, it's like an imaginary wall. It doesn't make a difference if it's angled or straight. So that's what he, that's what, how he explains the machlok. I'm a Rav Kahana. Now comes in a different Rav Kahana, okay? If you didn't think there were enough Rav Kahanas, now we have a fourth or a fifth Rav Kahana. And he says, here's the funny line, because this was named, this statement was said by all these Kahanas and I'm a Kahana, I'll say something about this also. I want to join the party of the Kahanas. So what does he say about this? He says, well, it all depends on how wide your opening to your mavoy is. Because if you're going to end up, it's true, it might jut out only four amo, but if it's a very wide open wall and your beam is going to have to go, right? If the opening is very wide and your beam is going to end up going more than 10 amo, Right, imagine you could have 10 on a wall, right, which is okay for a mavoy, but if it's on an angle now, you're going to end up, right, obviously Pythagorean theory, it's going to end up the, the kora, it's going to have to be longer than 10 amo. If your beam ends up longer than 10 amo, you're basically going to end up, that's not good, he says. Okay, so this is only going to work if the angle of it 
is a smaller angle, and basically you're going to end up, right, the opening is not so large that you're going to end up with a 10, uh, a 10 ama wall for four ama of space. Okay, so, of length. Um, Right, then you can't do it. Next question. What about the space underneath the beam? Remember, the beam is a tefak wide. So do we, since it's a tefak wide, now by lechi, we're not going to be able to do this, and we'll see that inside soon, because the lechi doesn't have a minimum thickness to it. Because it doesn't have a minimum thickness, we're going to basically say for sure we don't, we don't use, wherever the lechi starts, if I'm inside the mavoi, that's the end of it. You can't carry beyond that. But a koha, since it has to be one, even if it is thicker, but because it doesn't have a minimum, we're going to basically say that's all the time is going to be like that. But a koha, since it has a minimum thickness of a tefach, maybe because it's already kind of thick, we can view under the beam as part of the maboy and you can carry or not. That's a question. So we're going to have a two-sided debate here. Rav, Rabbi Chia, Rabbi Yochanan, the three of them, Amru, Muta, Lishtamesh, Tachala, Koha. You can use the space under the beam. Shmuel, Rabbi Shimon bar Rabbi Shimon ben Lakish, Amru, Asur, Lishtamesh, Tachala, Koha. You can't use that space. So now we're going to have three possible suggestions for the Machloket. You can see it charted out on the sheet. Three different options. Lema Baha Kamifuge. First option is our classic. When we see a Machloket, what do we assume? One holds a care, one holds Machit. How does that work? Demar Saval Koha Mishum Hekel. Okay, it's mishum heker, and therefore, since you can notice it, since it's a tefach thick, we're going to assume, since you notice it, you can carry underneath it. Umar sabar, kora mishum mechitza. The other opinion says, no, it's a mechitza, and then you'll have to say, when we view this imaginary mechitza, the mechitza drops down from the inner part of the beam. Obviously, that we're going to say maybe is the mechloket. Where does the mechitza drop down from? That's going to be one option after. But first, they suggest that. So then they say, no. You could say, maybe they both agree. It's because it has to be noticed. The question is, who needs to notice it? Does it need to be noticed from the outside, from the public domain, or from the inside, from the private? Right, is it to remind you when you're in Rashida Rabim that you're entering into the Mavoy, or is it from the Mavoy to know you're entering into Rashida Rabim? So, Demar Savar Hetera Miligyo. Umar Savar, okay, Miligyo means from inside. Umar Savar, Hakera Milaval, Mibachutz, right? Bar, bright, tachutz, wild animals, or bar, outside. Okay, so if it's from the outside, then we're going to say you can use the space under the beam because you can notice it. But if you're in the Mavoy, maybe it's not as noticeable, and therefore you can't, you can't use it. Vibait, Ema, the Kulama Mishumachitza. And then what's the Machlok? Et Hakabach Mechlege. Demar Savar, Hudoha Pnimi Yored Vesotem. Is it the outer part of the beam that drops down as an imaginary machitza, or is it the inner part of the beam? And then that would affect, if it's the inner part, then obviously you can't carry there. If the outer part, then you would be able to. Amra Pchista, and this is what I mentioned before, Hakomodim Beben Lechayayim Shasur. He says, everyone agrees that between lechis, it's going to be forbidden. Because again, the lechi doesn't have a minimum thickness, and therefore it could be very thin, and therefore we don't allow you to carry anywhere beyond the you know, the starting point of the lechi. Last question for today. Ba'amine Rami Brachama Mirochista, classic of our question. Na'at shtei teido p'shnei kotlei mavoim b'bachutz. Normally we're talking about the beam is standing on the wall of, till now that's what we've explained, the wall of the mavoi. What if you attach two pegs to the outside part of the wall and on those pegs you put a beam? So here comes something funny. If you put a beam on those pegs, ma, so amar lei, he answered him, Rami Barham asked Rav Chista, Rav Chista said, If you look at it as a machitza, and you say, in our case, what did we say? If you're going to allow carrying under the beam, because we're going to view the outer wall, the outer part of the beam as dropping that imaginary machitza. Well, if it's now on pegs, and it's outside the mavoi wall, and the machitza, imaginary machitza, drops down on the outer end, the machitza is not flush with the mavoi, and then you have a problem, it won't work at all. So if you're going to be mekel, in the other case, you're going to be machmir here. And the divreha oser mutal, and the reverse is going to be true in the other case. If you say it's the inner part that drops down, then in this case, the inner part is flush against the wall. So therefore, that will work as a machitza, and, and therefore you'd be allowed. Even though, if it were in the mavoi, where it's normally supposed to be, you wouldn't actually be allowed to carry under the mavoi, under that area. Rav Amar, he disagrees and says, Lidivreha Oser, he seems to disagree about everything today. Lidivreha Oser, Nami Asul. Even the one who forbids in 
the case of under the beeb would also forbid here. Why? <laughs> what we thought until now, which is the beam has to sit on the mavoi and this, on the mavoi wall, and this is not. This is attached on the outside, and therefore it doesn't work. Okay, we'll stop here for today, and tomorrow we're going to have a question on Rabbi's opinion. We'll pick up from here. Have a good day, everybody.